Greetings ladies and gentlemen. I am currently in Iowa in a little city known as Des Moines. <laughs> what a bloody French name. Anyway, I am still in the United States of America playing quality handheld games and reviewing them on this very channel. Apart from that, I have also been trying to pick up as many retro games and consoles as I possibly can which wasn't released back home in Europe. So, in today's video, I am going to be showing you some of my findings in which I've acquired over the last couple of weeks. Here we go. Right, let's have a look here. We start with Breath of Fire 3 for the PlayStation. This is um, a JRPG, one of which I would have liked to experience for quite some time. I've never actually got round to playing any of the Breath of Fire games, mainly because at home, um, there's not many JRPGs that actually get released, especially back in the 90s and early 2000s. So I think Breath of Fire was actually released, but in a lot more limited supply than America. So I actually got this one in Canada for very cheap at the farmer's market of all places. Anyway, this wasn't the only game I picked up whilst at the farmer's market. So I actually picked up a few more JRPGs instead, but on different formats. I've got here Etrian Odyssey 2 for the Nintendo DS, Etrian Odyssey 4 in this beautiful box for the Nintendo 3DS, and Etrian Odyssey Untold also for the 3DS. Again, this is a JRPG series I've been looking to explore but never got round to purchasing or trying. So now I've got it. Anyway, what else have I bloody got here? Hmm, what shall I show you next? Right, I was actually at an expo a few weeks ago. It was called um, the World Retro Gaming Expo. Re no, Retro World Expo, that's the one. Let me show you what I've got. Hmm. It was actually a bit of a struggle, to be honest, to find bargains at this place. It just seemed filled to the absolute brim with Jimmy Savile dirty resellers. Most of them wanted absolutely ludicrous prices for their stuff. Like prices basically an educated person would never pay in a million billion years. So ironically, even though I'm a British citizen in America, a lot of the stuff I ended up buying there was actually from Japan. Because because that seemed to be priced affairish, strangely. Right, so, so of the Japanese stuff, I got Bomberman 4 and Bomberman, ooh, Bomberman 5 for the Super Nintendo. Uh, basically, only Bomberman 1, 2 and 3 was released in Europe and the United States. So it's great to have the other two entries in the series now as well. So I've got the PAL version of 1 and 2 back home. And here's the Japanese version of 4 and 5. So now I'm just looking for number 3. Right, let's move on to the NES. I finally got a copy of another JRPG. Because as I was saying, not that many have been released at home unfortunately. And this one was Crystallis for the NES. Another, again, another game I've been looking for for quite some time and this happens to be the first time I've ever actually seen one for sale outside of eBay. So I snatched it up as soon as I saw it. Right, I was over in the States back in December and on that visit I finally picked up myself a copy of Chrono Cross. I have not actually got round to playing it yet, but when I eventually do manage to play it, I have now got the strategy guide to Chrono Cross, which would be interesting. One comment I would like to make about this purchase is I did buy this one from a reseller and basically the bloody idiot didn't even seem to know what he was trying to sell. Um, when I asked how much this was, the bloody bastard had to go on eBay and find out how much it's worth. So he's basically getting loads and loads of stock and just knows nothing about games. What a bloody twat. He also had other items which were a lot more expensive, which I didn't buy, which he also bloody price checked on eBay. You should know your stuff, you bloody dirty bastard. Anyway, let's see what else I got. Speaking of someone who wasn't a dirty bastard, he was actually a really nice man, is I actually got to meet Pat the NES Punk. And I bought a copy of the Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the NES Library. Again, I've actually wanted this for quite a while. And the only reason I've never got round to purchasing it is again the bloody weight of the bloody thing. Could you imagine how much this would be to import to Europe? I can tell you, a bloody lot. But now I'm here in the US, I have my own copy. And back home we had 250 NES games released, 
whilst here in America there was 750. So this guidebook will hopefully provide me with a lot of education, education, education when making NTSC purchases. So thank you, Pat the NES Punk. This should really aid me in my quest. Anyway, now for the grand finale of this video. You obviously all bloody saw it in the thumbnail anyway, and it's probably the reason you've clicked this in the first place. I have finally, after many years of searching, found another console that was never bloody released at home. This time, I have the Virtual Boy. Yeah! It comes with a nice controller as well, which looks remarkably like a, a GameCube controller with um, NES buttons, I must say. It's pretty nice to hold. Um, it also came with a copy of Mario Tennis and the instruction manual to Mario Tennis. And um, even better, even better than that, it came in a bloody box. So, as you can see over the last few weeks, I've been very busy and I found even more tapped to clog up my house in Britain. So, I guess I have to find space for all of this. Cheerio!